Shalom. Today we're going to do another lesson in the small word series, words that are easily confused. We're going to start with this word, mem yud, and it's pronounced me. Me means who, and thus begins standard Hebrew teaching joke. Me is who, who is he, he is she, and if you've never seen that video, I'll put a link for it at the bottom. This me, this who, is always a question. Genesis 3, 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? In Genesis 23, 24. And said, Whose daughter, literally the daughter of whom, art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? Sometimes in English it is translated as what? Deuteronomy 26. And what man, in other words, who is the man that he planteth a vineyard and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. Similarly, Psalm 34, 12. Who is the man? What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? There's also an idiom that takes the word me, meaning who, and the verb la tete, to give, me ye ten. And when we have these together, it's like, who would give this? Who would set this situation in place? And it is always translated as, oh, would that X, Y, Z happen? For example, Exodus 16, 3. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by, who would have given our death into the hand of Jehovah in the land of Egypt? When we sat by the flesh pot, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So we just need to learn this as an idiom. Here's another example, Deuteronomy 5.29. Oh, that there were such a heart. Who, oh, that someone would give a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So this is the word me. It is only used as a question word. If you have the sentence in English, the man who gave me the ticket, that who there will be a different word. We will use the relative pronoun, a share. So who, me, is always a question. Now there is a word mean. You notice the nun goes below the line. It's a final nun. And then also the mem by itself, which will be attached to another word. So these two standalone word by itself, min, and the mem prefix mean from. For example, in Genesis 2.6, we have the standalone word min. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. In Genesis 2.10, we have an example of the mem prefix, also meaning from. And a river went out of or from Aden. And it's one word. If you remember, there are no one-letter words in Hebrew. If you have a prepositional prefix of one letter, and we're going to see a bunch of them in a minute, it will be attached to the word me. Eden, from Eden, to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it came into four heads. And as long as we are talking about these phonemes, these sounds, we will look at one more related word. It's only phonemically related, not by meaning. And this is the word mean. And this word always means kind, as in species. We see it first in Genesis 1.11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And so we constantly see this reproducing after his own kind, in his own species. Ezekiel 47.10. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto Eniglaim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kind, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. Now, in post-biblical Hebrew, this word came to mean a sectarian, someone who is not of the orthodox sect of Judaism, it's someone outside that. They're a different kind. Quoting from Maimonides, a 12th century Jewish religious law. There are five descriptions of Israelites that are called minim, infidels. 
namely, he who says that there is no God and no providence. He who says that there is a providence, but that this providence consists of two or more deities. He who says that there is indeed only one God, but that he is corporeal and has a similitude. He who says that he, that is God, is not the only is not the only first being and the rock of the whole universe. And also he who worships him, some star or planet, that the same may become an intercessor between himself and the Lord of the universe. Now every one of these five descriptions of Israelites is called a min. He's of a different species. This is the thought, and this is the word in Talmudic writings that they use to refer to believers in Yeshua. And this is very clear and it's spelled out. For example, um, in the tractate of Adazara, a rabbi is having a long discussion with someone who is identified as a min. And the min constantly refers back to having heard, it is spelled out, Yeshu HaNutsri, in other words, Jesus the, Jesus the Nazarene, Jesus the Nazarene say certain sayings. The Min is trying to defend what he is saying to the rabbi because he has heard Yeshua say certain teachings. So it's very clear this is a definition for them. And you can see in this in Maimonides definition, providence consists of two or more deities. If people talk about a triune God, or that he is corporeal, that he has a body, talking about the incarnation. All this they set aside as some kind of other belief outside of orthodox belief of Judaism. So that includes traditional Christianity and messianic belief. So another question word which is confused with me is ma. Ma is translated what or how. So for example, in Genesis 2.19, And out of the ground Yehovah God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So this is a referential pronoun. It's not a question to see what he would call them. Here is a question. Genesis 3.13, And Jehovah God said to the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So ma can be used for either a question word, what, or a referential pronoun. It is translated as how. It has the same meaning, however. Genesis 28.17, He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? None other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. We might say, what a dreadful place this is. It carries the same meaning, the what and the how. Or as a question word, Genesis 27, 20. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found so quickly, my son? And he said, Because Jehovah thy God brought it to me. Now ma is very consistently combined with these one-letter prepositions. And each of these has a video that I've done many years ago, and I'll post all those videos for you so you can get an idea. So the preposition that is indicated by the letter bet can mean in. Now if you go look in your strongs, you will not find any entry under ba me or any of the coming up ones. These are all listed under strongs 4100 ma. So with the bet, it's not really too confusing. Bet means kind of like in. So we could look at it this way. Genesis 15, 8. And he said, Lord Jehovah, whereby, in what way shall I know that I shall inherit it? Or Malachi 3, 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein, in how, in what way have I robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. The prepositional kaf means like or similar to, but when these two phonemes are together, kama, it always means how many or how much. And this is a very common word in modern Hebrew, kama, how much. Genesis 47, 8. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, how old art thou? Literally, the words read, kama, how many 
are the days of the years of your life. That is a literal reading there. Psalm 7840. How oft, how much did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Probably the most confusing one is the Lamed prefix. So Lamed means two. And there is one good translation here, which appears in Amos 5.18. Woe unto you that desire the day of Jehovah. To what end? Why is it for you? The day of Jehovah is darkness and not light. So this is the meaning, and it's also a very common word in modern Hebrew. Lama means why. The concept behind it is to what end? Genesis 4, 6, And Jehovah said unto Cain, Why, to what end art thou wroth? And why, to what end is thy countenance fallen? If you do good, won't you be accepted? Genesis 18, 13, And Jehovah said to Abraham, Wherefore, to what end did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Again, if you go to look up Lama in a Strong's, you won't find it listed under Lamed. It is strictly under the word for what or how, Ma. I hope this is helpful for your studies. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim, Ahashamayim. Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.